Hey guys, Andy back here from Mediocre Hobbies bringing you another painting tutorial. So on today's painting tutorial, um, it actually wasn't really supposed to be a tutorial, especially with this miniature. It was kind of a happy accident. Um, so one of the videos that I'm doing for you guys that will be up um, on Saturday this week is the new big beautiful McFarlane Toys Orc Mega Knob, like absolutely stunning miniature. Um, as I was pulling that miniature apart, um, to get it into its separate pieces to make it easier to spray up and get painted, um, I noticed how much detail there was in the giant orc face. It was super well defined, super well detailed, and I could not pass up the opportunity to use that stunning piece um, to do a video on how to paint orc skin. So that's what today's video is going to be all about. I'm going to be showing you guys how to paint up orc skin uh, really quick, really fast, but on a really nice big piece so it's really easy to see what I'm doing, where the details are going to go teeth, gums, eyes, scars, the whole shabam. So um, yeah, stick around and enjoy the video. And here is the giant orc head I was talking about. As you can see, it is chock a block full of details, crisp lines, deep ridges, like the gum detail, the lip detail, the tusk detail. It's such a perfect canvas to show you guys orc skin. So without further ado, let's get started. The first coat of paint I used is the Volopus Pink Contrast Paint. And I'm going to use this to slap a base coat on all of the inside of his mouth, his gums, and any scarring. So he's got a gnarly scar down his left eye, and he has what looks like a fairly fresh cut across his chin. So we're going to use the Volibus Pink just to uh, basically block in those colours, um, especially the one over the chin. They look like they have stitch marks left and right, so I did a few lines across those marks as well. All those sore, distressed skin. Once I had all of the Volibus Pink though, it should look something like this. I also used to fill in his eye socket because those uh, soft pinky uh, fleshy bits under his eye, it's a great base coat for that. Next we're going to go over to Plague Bear Flesh. I think Plague Bear Flesh contrasts actually a fantastic base colour uh, for doing orc skin. So I'm going to throw a full coat of this. So another thing that is such a big canvas does, especially for me, um, I like showing you guys how to use contrast paints quite a lot. And this demonstrates the power of contrast paints better than any small model could. I mean, as you can see, I am just slopping this colour uh, on and it's flowing into all the deep recesses, um, leaving all of the raised areas quite bright. It's basically shading and highlighting for us. You don't have to overthink it. And literally the results scream out at you. There's a few things more enjoyable uh, painting than work the skin because all of the details are so well defined. It's so easy to uh, layer it up and highlight know where all the paint's supposed to go. As you can see what the contrast is doing. One of the cool things is the Volops pink is actually a darker colour than the green, so you can just go over the pinky parts. So for instance, when I went over his right eye, I didn't try and miss it. I filled that in with the black bear flesh as well. And as that dried, it's just going to leave just that hint of pink in the deepest recesses, which is exactly what we wanted to go for. Jumping over to Skeleton Horde now, we're going to use this just to throw a very quick uh, coat of paint over all of the teeth and tusks. Nothing crazy, nothing really to explain, just it will sell into all those recesses nicely. Give us the perfect base coat for our teeth. Now, while uh, all of these uh, wet contrast paints were drying, I went ahead and painted the helmet pretty quick, just a quick coat of rust, um, just so it kind of blocked out that colour and made it easier for uh, us to see the final product. What we're going to do now is we're going to move over and use our serif from Sepia to shade the entire piece of bar the metal helmet. I'll be going in with some red on that later on, but that won't be on this video. And while the coat of serif from Sepia is drying on this miniature, I'm going to take a few seconds to talk to you guys. Okay guys, while that shade is drying, I thought I'd take the opportunity to thank you guys for watching my videos. Um, this is officially the first month of me going full-time into this project. Um, so February was month one and it was a huge success uh, in no small part thanks to you guys for watching my videos. So thank you so much for that. Um, if you are enjoying what you see, make sure you give this video a like. Um, drop me a comment below. It helps feed the algorithm. It helps push my videos out to more people. Um, I do get back to each and every comment that is placed. So if you've got any questions, please feel free to drop them below and I'll get back to you um, quite quickly. 
If you find real value in what I do and want to support me and the channel and want to make sure that it grows so I can make more of these videos in the future, the best way for you to do that is to uh, click the link in my bio, go to my Patreon and support me there. Thank you guys so much and let's get back to painting. Okay, once the shade is dry, we should look something like this. As you can see, he's quite dark, he's quite grungy. And there's definitely styles of orc where you can keep it dark and grungy, but I quite like the cartoony look, nice and bright and vibrant. So we're going to go back in and start the uh, layering probe process Sorry, with the Warboss Green Layer Paint. After this, we are going to uh, layer up all of the higher up parts of this miniature, all of the raised ridges. So starting with his eyebrow, we're going to work on his cheeks and his little snout. Um, and as you can see, all those lines up and down, even just above his gums and below his gums, you can see um, all those deep lines. You just want to leave the deepest recesses with that dark gnarly green and then layer up with the war boss green it's a pretty straightforward process on an orc miniature like i said before the detail is all like it screams out at you a little more more difficult on uh smoother models i find things like elves and human skin sometimes you have to paint in the detail that you want that is not the case with an orc and uh, like i said there's a few things more enjoyable um I'm painting up orc skin. Uh, painting up this giant random head, which wasn't really planned as a video, um, actually gave me the hankering that maybe I would like to go and try a bust at some stage. Um, if any of you guys have actually painted up busts before, um, let me know in the comments below what you thought of your first bust experience, um, how you found the challenges you faced, um, and would you recommend attempting to paint a bust? I'm quite curious. This was by far the longest uh, part of painting up this miniature was the first layering stage on his skin. I was trying to find all the correct bits of detail, make sure I didn't miss anything. I'm thoroughly enjoying the process. There's something super satisfying about it. And this is what the orc face will look like when that first layer uh, is complete. Now we're going to jump over to Skarsnik Green. This is the last highlight on the skin. And all of this is going to focus on um, the highest up area. So basically the same points as the last one, but just take that like 40% higher. So the very kind of tips of his brows, the very tips of his jawline, the very tips of his like the, the lips. Um, you just want this color showing through a little bit. You do not want it to overpower the war boss green from the previous stage. So as you can see here, I'm doing his uh, eyebrow. It's a very thin, very soft line across it. Nothing crazy. Just repeat that process across the entire orc face and you'll be left with a very satisfying uh, shade of orc skin. I've been staring at that piece now since I finished painting it. Um, I'm very excited to paint up the rest of the miniature. A huge McFarlane toy. Uh, to me that's a really nice orc skin colour. We're going to jump over and get to work on those tusks of his. So Tolerant Sand will be the base coat. I was a little bit over exuberant with the voluminous pink at the start and I covered up some of the smaller teeth entirely with pink which means they didn't show up great with the skeleton horde. So if you're doing this um, just be a little bit more careful there. So when I go into Tolerant Sand here, I basically need to paint back in those teeth instead of just layering them up a little bit. He does have a few snaggly tooth hiding in amongst all of those gums and teeth. Same thing before, like when we get to um, the smaller miniatures, like the Orc Tusks are there, but they're extremely flat. Whereas with pieces like this, those ridges are actually there. So when you go to highlight the tusk, it's super clear what you're trying to do, what you're trying to achieve. And you get a super nice result. Even just the process of painting up a piece this size has, uh, has taught me a thing or two. So that's the first coat on the teeth. We're now going over to Screaming Skull. We're gonna basically, like the skin, uh, do repeat the process, but just go kind of 40% higher 
We don't offer power in his teeth. He doesn't want pearly whites. He doesn't brush with Colgate every morning. He's an orc. So, fine brush. Thin lines. And just get those uh, highlights on. where we get to highlight those teeth properly so now onto pink horror and this is the layer paint for all of the scars and his gums so just take your time i wasn't very good with holding the piece in frame here so to cut a little bit of that i do apologize so pink horror all of the lovely gums that are super detailed on a piece this size just got a touch of that where light gets to it the most so all the front parts i was going to do uh, his scars but we're going to treat it exactly like what the last highlight on the skin or teeth it's only like a a 40 percent touch on it not trying to overpower the volibus pink that's shaded down just a few nice lines just like this it starts to look like kind of fresh or gnarly scars, but it's not going to overpower the miniature. And then those little uh, underlids, I guess you would call eyelids, the, uh, the bags under his eyes that are a little bit pink. Just a quick, nice highlight to those. That's what they look like. Now I'm going to go into a bit of a fist on red and get that beaded lie locked in it's not a lot i'm going to do that i never tend to do a lot of work with orc eyes it's generally just one flat coat of red they don't seem to have pupils or anything like that just straight up red and with that detail that will bring an end to um painting up this orc face it was a super enjoyable uh process like i said i cannot wait to see it um on top of the uh the entire completed McFarlane toy. Usually by the end of the video I'd have a 360. Not having a 360 this would be kind of pointless so I just have some nice stills here. So here is the orc head in all its glory. Finished up out of my grubby hands and then I get it a nice size comparison so you can actually see the size of the piece that I was doing. So yeah, thank you guys for sticking around to the end of the video. Um, hope to see you guys around. You could try to play, but you're never gonna be me. Thanks a lot, guys. The other way, what I'm doing, ain't